Hey everyone, I hope you're all staying happy and well, and thanks for tuning in to another tutorial. Today we'll be going over how to create an automated scheduled service that performs a backup of your DynamoDB tables using AWS Lambda, the serverless framework, and GitHub Actions to handle the deployment pipeline. As always, if you find any of these videos helpful, please make sure to subscribe as it really helps out the channel an incredible amount. But for now, let's get started. Now, the first thing we want to do is head over to our IAM management console and we'll begin to create a new user. And this user will generate programmatic access keys so that we can uh, feed them into our GitHub Actions deployment pipeline. And this allows us to deploy our service to the AWS cloud. Um, so we're just going to name this user here and we're going to call this uh, DynamoDB uh, Schedule Backup User. Now, it's a bit long, but it's okay. And we're going to check off programmatic access, hit permissions. And then we're going to click attach existing policies and we're just going to search up the following i am full access so we're going to check that off um, we also need amazon s3 full access the, most of these are just um are, are required for the serverless framework to actually perform the deployment um, uh, and some of these are actually for our application itself um, but anyways the next one we need is cloudwatch logs um, full access, so we've checked that off. We also need CloudWatch events, and this is for our application because um, we'll be using, oh, well, while the serverless framework behind the scenes will be using CloudWatch events um, to handle the scheduling uh, of our Lambda function. So we'll check that off. And of course, we also need CloudFormation as this will help our um, application to be deployed. And last but not least, we need AWS Lambda. Um, Yep, uh, AWS Lambda full access, and that is, should be all. So we're just going to quickly uh, skip ahead and check that we have everything, um, and looks good. So we can go ahead and click Create User, and awesome. So once again, these are this is the only time we'll be able to see the secret access key, so we're going to make note of that. We're going to copy it. We're going to head over to our repo here, and we're going to click into Settings. We're also going to click into Secrets, and we're going to add a new repository secret. So this is the secret access key. So we're just going to paste that in really quickly. We're going to generate a new repository secret. And this is going to be the access key ID. And we're just going to copy that here. And we're going to paste that in as well. And awesome. So now our repository is set up for our GitHub Actions. Now we can actually go ahead and head over to our code and write up the deployment file for GitHub Actions. So we're going to head over to VS Code here, and I've actually already pre-written um, the configuration file so as to save us some time. Um, I go over a bit, I go over it a bit more in detail in my other videos, so feel feel free to check those out as well. But basically, the idea is that we're going to create a folder in our root directory called .github, and within that folder, we're also going to create another folder called workflows, and then finally, in this folder, we are going to create um, a workflow file called main.yaml, and I'm naming it main because it will be only triggered on the main branch and we'll see how to configure that in a second. So this is what I have um, pre-written already, but basically just to quickly go over it, this is the name of the workflow file. Um, this section tells us that we, this job will only be triggered when we push to the main branch. And of course here, this is our um, list of jobs. We only have one job here called deploy. And Basically here, we're checking out into our repository. Um, we're using Node 12.x here. Um, I believe this should be 14.x, but we'll leave it like that. Um, and then we install some dependencies. And then last but not least, we actually run the serverless GitHub action, uh, which allows us to ultimately deploy our application to the AWS cloud using the serverless framework. And as you can see here, this is where um, we actually retrieve and use the, um, the secret access keys that we have just uh, copied into our repository. So awesome. That's pretty much it for uh, setting up the GitHub configuration file. Now let's move on to setting up the serverless.yaml file. And to do so, we're going to start off by creating a new file in our root directory called serverless.yaml. And we're going to start off by naming the service. So the first thing we want to specify is, of course, uh, under the service field. And this is, being a, this is going to be our service name. I'm just going to name this uh, Dynamo Schedule Backup. Uh, feel free to name it however you wish. And the next thing we want to specify is the provider. And this is the, going to be the cloud provider. In this case, we're going to be using AWS. So we'll specify it as such. And the runtime we'll be using today is Node.js 14.x, uh, which is currently the latest version supported by uh, AWS Lambda, I believe. Um, and next, we're going to specify a development stage. Uh, since we're just in development, I'm just going to keep this as dev. And we also want to specify a region. Um, generally, you want this to be the region that is closest to the clients that you are serving. But since this is ultimately a backend application, uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I guess it will make more sense to uh, keep it as a region as your DynamoDB table to ensure uh, low latency. But we're just going to use US West 1 here. Um, 
And the next part is pretty important. Um, we are actually going to specify a global set of IAM rule statements. And this we only need one, uh, which basically allows us our Lambda function to have permission to create the DynamoDB backup. Um, so basically, we're gonna, this, the syntax is as follows. Uh, we're going to name the effect, and we're going to say that the effect is that we're going to allow the following action. And the action will be um, DynamoDB, because this is the resource we're accessing. And the, um, the operation itself is going to be called create backup. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. And then, of course, we also want to specify the resource that we actually want to um, enable this action for. And um, generally, you want this to be the uh, ARN, or the Amazon resource name, of the actual DynamoDB table, um, so as to make it very specific and granular, um, so your security permissions are really um, restrictive, um, which is generally a good practice. Um, and it will follow this format. Um, all the ARNs for DynamoDB tables will follow this format. So everything up to here is the same. Um, region will just be whatever region you specify here, or uh, whatever region your DynamoDB table is. Um, and of course, this is your AWS account ID, and table stays the same, and then this will be your table name. And if you notice earlier, my table name is actually um, important data, um, just for the sake of naming it. Um, anyway, but for this tutorial, um, just to keep things simple and quick, uh, I'm just going to use the wildcard, uh, which matches all resources. And that's just represented by a single asterisk. Um, but yeah, please do make note of the good convention of or best practice of using the actual ARN for your DynamoDB table. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for the provider section. And the next section we can actually do is write up the function section, which will allow us to initialize our actual Lambda function. Um, so we're just going to call this backup uh, DB here. This is not the name of the actual Lambda handler, so that's fine. Um, we'll see in a second how to name that. Um, but the next thing we want to specify is actually where this function is going to be located. So um, I'm going to put this uh, um, under the source folder, and I'm going to call the file backup.js later on. And our function uh, name will be handler. Um, so I'm going to name it as such. And of course, we're going to write the specify name for the actual Lambda function itself that will appear on the AWS Lambda console. I'm just going to call this backup, um, di oops, backup Dynamo DB. And of course, you can also include a description. I'll include that for the code, source code mentioned uh, in the description below, but I'll leave it out for now for the sake of time. Um, and also, we want to specify the memory size. Um, this is a really simple job. I don't, um, of course, if your uh, database table is really large, you might need more memory and perhaps a larger timeout time. Uh, but because my table is pretty much empty, it only has a few things, entries in it, I'm going to keep it as the minimal option possible, which is 128 megabytes. And of course, we also need a timeout, and this is just going to be set to five seconds. I don't think we will need this, but uh, let's just keep it like that. And next but not least, we also need to specify the event triggers, and this is going to be under the events field. And because today we're going to be using the CloudWatch events um, schedule trigger, we're going to uh, you reference this as the schedule field. And there are two options that are provided by the serverless framework, um, which is really awesome. And one option is to use um, the rate uh, option, or we can specify the schedule under a cron expression. And um, for the rate format, it's going to follow this format where um, you're going to specify the value and then the unit um, as such. Um, so for example, um, we, if you want to have it to run like once a day, it's going to be something like this, rate one day. And there's a small detail that if, the, if it becomes plural, for example, two days, then we need to make the units plural as well. Um, and of course, just in as, as an example for completion, um, if you want to write a cron expression so that it runs, for example, at um, perhaps like 5 p.m. Uh, every day, um, then it's going to be something like, um, like this, I believe. Um, and of course, please do make note that this is all going to be in UTC time as per Lambda specifications. Um, so definitely make note of that. Um, but yeah, for the sake of simplicity and for demoing um, this application, I'm just going to use this as um, perhaps rate three minutes, um, just so I have some time, and I'll, I'll be able to show you that the application actually worked. Um, so we'll leave it like that, but definitely feel free to uh, change the schedule to however um, however frequent you need it to be. And yeah, that's actually pretty much it for um, most of the specifications. Uh, the last thing that we need is just to specify an environment variable for our Lambda function, and we're just going to call this uh, Dynamo DB table. Oops, Dynamo. Uh, yeah, sure. Dynamo TV uh, table name, I guess, or Dynamo DB table name. Um, anyway, yeah, but yeah, as I mentioned earlier, my table name is just important data, so I'm just going to hard code it here. 
and awesome. So that is pretty much it. As you can see, the serverless configuration file is pretty short, but this will allow us to get the job done to not only deploy our Lambda function, but also attach an event trigger um, that is basically scheduled right now for every three minutes. And, and yeah. So now we can actually move on to writing our Lambda function. And before we begin, we're just gonna quickly install all the necessary dependencies that we'll be using uh, today. And uh, I'm gonna be using Node and Yarn here. So I'm gonna do Yarn add. And the dependencies are really simple, it's just two of them. And that includes the AWS SDK as well as dot and And this helps us uh, access environment variables in Node. Um, so we'll just give it a second to install. Awesome, so both of them have been installed and we're gonna close our terminal. And now we're gonna go ahead and in our root directory, we're gonna create a folder called source and we're gonna uh, create our file as such. Um, I believe I've named it backup here. So we're gonna create backup.js and now we can begin writing. So the first thing we wanna do is actually import the um, AWS SDK. Uh, all right, awesome. And then we're gonna initialize a new DynamoDB object so we can access the um, AWS SDK function specific for DynamoDB. Um, I'm not sure why it's not highlighting it for me, but it should be like this. Awesome, okay. Anyway, uh, and next but not least, we want to actually export our um, handler function, and this is gonna be an asynchronous function. Normally we would take an event trigger, but because this is just gonna be a scheduled job and there's not nothing too complicated here, we don't actually need to um, pass in the event argument here at all. So we'll leave it empty as that. And next but not least, we also want to uh, write a ca uh, try catch block um, for error handling. And inside the try block, we're gonna actually um, create a new date object. And this is gonna be how we um, basically um, name the backup um, just so because we're running it once a day we want to um, sort of be able to uniquely identify each of our backups and um, the way we're going to use this is going to is that we're going to pass it into a parameters object that we will then pass it into our function call um, to create the backup um, so we're going to first uh, start this by creating a new params object um, and the first thing we need to specify is the backup name and so this is just going to be a string interpolated uh, javascript string and we're going to use the um, we're going to get the full year first and then proceeded by a dash um, and then date dot get month and we're going to get the month as well um, and because javascript months are zero based index we need to add one um, to make sure it's accurate and then we're going to put a dash as well and then we're just going to um, write the date um, awesome and put a comma and the next field that we need is actually the table name um, so we know which DynamoDB table we want um, because this is we're just handling one table at a time for now um, we're just going to access this in our environment variable as we have declared earlier in our serverless.yaml file and I believe I name it DynamoDB table name awesome okay and we're going to put a semicolon and uh, now we can finally call uh, make the function call to perform the backup and we'll do it as um, we'll just name the result um, backup red um, I guess we can log this for debugging purposes as well, um, but we're going to make sure we await on this and then we're going to call DynamoDB um, dot uh, create backup and then we're going to pass in the parameters and of course we need to await on the pro promise so we're going to do uh, dot promise and that is pretty much it. Now, um, the last thing I guess we can do is just log um, the back of res to see uh, what the result actually looks like. And of course, we need to implement the catch block. Uh, we can just quickly include a, um, a log of the error message. Um, but feel free to um, implement your own um, retry uh, mechanism or whatnot, um, depending on your use case or how important you want this backup to be. Um, but for now, we're just going to log the error and nothing else. And of course, um, to conclude this, we're just going to return um, from the Lambda function. And as you can see, it's really simple. It's not much code, but this will basically do the job. Um, but for now, we're gonna quickly deploy this and we'll be back to see if it actually worked. And so we're back. And as you can see, all the steps in the deployment pipeline have succeeded. So now we can actually head over to CloudWatch Logs. And under the CloudWatch console on the left side, we can click Log Groups. And then if you just click Refresh, you should be able to see the log group created for your Lambda function. So we're gonna go ahead and click into this. And I've actually allowed this to run for a few minutes now. Um, so we should see a couple of logs. And yeah, awesome. Okay, so it looks like it's been running for at least nine minutes. And so we should expect to see uh, three backups created successfully. Uh, one at 11.38. Um, the other one at 41 and 44. So we're gonna head over to our DynamoDB uh, console and we're gonna click into backups. And evidently we can see um, three different backups all created 
uh, today. Um, I guess the naming convention is a bit poorly chosen here, but if you were to actually run this once a day, then the naming convention here would work. Um, so if we look at the time more specifically, we can see um, they're all run at, or they're created at the um, correct times, 38, 41, and 44. And there you have it. That pretty much wraps up this video about creating um, a scheduled service that is automated that helps you back up your uh, DynamoDB tables uh, using the serverless framework and AWS Lambda. As always, if you learned something or found this video helpful, please do consider hitting that like and subscribe button down below as it really helps out the channel and series. And as always, I hope you're all staying happy and well out there, but for now, I'll see you in the next video.